Hello and welcome to this video on determining a gradient using two points. Now let's first establish what we mean by the word gradient. And the word gradient just means steepness. So it's how steep the line is. If we look at these examples here, we can see that that line, for example, is steeper than that line there. So that is going to have a greater gradient than that one. And more specifically, what gradient is, is for each increase of 1 in x, each time x increases by 1, then what does the y value go up by? And we often use m to represent what the gradient is. And it's basically how many units is the line going up for each one you go across. If you have a line like that, each one you go across, how many units, might be squares in this case, are you going up? And that is the gradient. And that means the more squares you go up for each time x increases by 1, the greater the gradient is going to be. And that makes sense because the more squares you go up, the steeper the line is, the greater the gradient. So let's do it for this example here. What is the gradient of A? So A is this line here. So let's think, when we start on a point actually on the grid, if we increase x by 1 like this, x increased by 1, how many squares, how many units are we going up? Well, it's going up one unit to get back on the line. So we can see, therefore, the gradient m is equal to 1. What about the second one? b, that's this line here. And we can see it's completely horizontal. So each time x increases by 1, so x is increased by 1, how many units are you going up? Well, in fact, you're not going up at all. So it's going zero squares up. So the gradient is, in fact, zero. So if the gradient is zero, you have a completely horizontal line. It has no steepness at all. What about C? If we start on a point on the grid here, for example, each time x goes up by one, we can see it's going two squares up. So one, two, go across one, we're going two up again. So the gradient is equal to two. And what about D? D is this one. Now, this is an interesting one. If we start a point on the grid, say here, as x increases by 1, y is in fact decreasing by 1. It's going down one square, so the gradient is in fact negative. And if you have a negative gradient, you're effectively going downhill as x increases. What about E? E is this line here. Let's start a point on the grid line, so that's on the grid lines, that's on the grid lines. So, as x increases by 1, well, we seem to be going up a fraction of a square. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, like, does that look like 2 fifths? Is it half a square? But can you see that if we went 3 squares across, as x increases by 3, y increases by 1. And that means for each time x increases by 1, y must be increasing by a third. So that means one across, a third up, one across, a third up, one across, a third up. So if you've gone up a third, a third, and a third, you've gone up one square. So the gradient is fractional, and it's a third. And then we've got F. So if we look at F, let's start a point on the grid lines, like here. As x increases by one, we're going across one. The y value is decreasing by one, two, three, to get back onto the line again. So the gradient is minus three because the y value decreased by 3 each time x increased by 1. Now we can use this principle to get a formula that allows us to determine the gradient when we have the coordinates of two points. And the formula is this. It's the gradient is equal to the change in y, and that symbol there, that's in fact in the Greek alphabet, that's capital delta. That means the change in. So the gradient is a change in y over the change in x. And if I just pick a simple example, let's just say I had two points. I had, say, 5, 2. And then we've also got another point on the line, 7, 10. So it's, for example, we had a line like this, and we had these two points on the line. So we've got 5, 2s on the line, and 7, 10s on the line. And we've read off these two points on the line to get these two points. So what is the gradient? Well, if we use this formula, so we use a formula, we use a change in y at the top of the fraction. So let's look at the y values. Make sure that you use the y values. For some reason, when students do the change in y, they do the change in x. Well, this is the x value, that's the y value. So you want the change in y. So to get from 2 to 10, what are you doing? You're adding 8. So the change in y is 8. And to get from 5 to 7, the change in x, that's going to be 2. So change in y over change in x, don't get them the wrong way around. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the gradient is 4. That means that each time x increases by 1, the y value is increasing 
by 4. In fact, we can see that if x goes up by 1, then y increases by 4. So if x increases by 1, the x value is 6. And if the y value increases by 4, then 2 plus 4 is 6. And then if x increases by 1, we get to 7. y increases by 4, you get to 10. That seems to be right, doesn't it? Yep. Do these examples here now. We want to find the gradient of the line going through the following pairs of points. So we've got the first one. We've got 0, 0 and 4, 8. So we just use the formula. So the gradient M is, at the top of our fraction, changing the Y value. 0 to 8, we're adding 8. And the change in the X value is 0 to 4, which is 4. So it's 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. The second one we have, it's going between 3, 2, the line, and 6, 14. So let's do the same thing again. The gradient is... The change in y, 2 to 14, we're adding 12. Over the change in x, that's 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Third one, c, we've got 3, 2 this time, and 5 minus 4. Now, this one's a bit more interesting. Now, the gradient this time, what's the change in y? Well, let's say we're going from this point to this point. The change in y, well, to get from 2 to minus 4, you're subtracting 6, aren't you? So you've got to make sure you put minus 6 at the top. And then for the change in x, 3 to 5, you're just defined by 2. And then minus 6 divided by 2, negative divided by positive is negative, so it's negative 3. And by the way, you might wonder, does it matter what way these points go around? And the answer is no, as long as you're consistent in what point you go from and what point you go to. So, for example, if I wanted to go from this point to this point, what's the change in y? Well, the change in y, to get from minus 4 to 2, you're adding 6... And then the change next to get from 5 to 3, making sure you're going in the same direction. 5 to 3, you're subtracting 2, so it's 6 divided by negative 2, and that's still minus 3. You can see now that the top is positive instead of negative, the bottom is negative instead of positive, but you still end up with the same gradient. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Right, D. We've got minus 1, 3, and 5, 0. So the gradient is going to be, with a change in y, 3 to 0, is minus 3, we're subtracting 3, and the change in x to get from minus 1 to 5, you're adding 6, and then minus 3 divided by 6, well that's fractional isn't it? We could simplify that fraction, 3 over 6 is the same as 1 over 2, it's half, and I'm going to put the minus on the front of the fraction, so it's minus a half. So this gradient is negative and fractional. And then we've got question 2. We've got the gradient of a line passing through 4, 5, and 7k is 5. Determine k. So we've got these two points, 4, 5, and 7k. And we know this time that the gradient is 5. So we do exactly what we did before, but now we know that m is 5. We know the gradient m is 5. So we write the gradient 5 is equal to the change... Sorry, I should have written a k there. So the change in y to get from 5 to k, well, we could subtract them. So we could do that minus that, k minus 5. And then finally, we do the change in x. We can do 7 minus 4, so that's 3. So we've got an equation now. We want to get k on its own. Let's see what's happening to k. We're subtracting 5, then dividing by 3. So the last thing we did was divide by 3. So we want to undo that first. We times both sides by 3. And then left-hand side, 5 times 3 is 15. And then if we times the right-hand side by 3, it just gets rid of the over 3. So we have k minus 5. And then if we add 5 to both sides, we have 20 is equal to k. So k was equal to 20. And finally, often exam questions, they just give you a sketched graph, a straight line, and they just say, we'll find the gradient. They haven't even given you the explicit coordinates of any points. You just have to choose them yourself. So if we choose two points on this graph, and it makes most sense to choose points that are actually on the grid line. So rather than choosing like halfway between a square where we don't know the exact coordinate necessarily, let's actually pick a point where we actually have integer coordinates, whole number coordinates. So this is a good one. Look, that's 0, 1, isn't it? So I'm going to write down that coordinate, 0, 1, and we just need one other point. We need two points to find the gradient of the line. So let's pick another one that's actually on the grid point. Well, this one looks good. We've got 8, 7. So let's write that one down, 8, 7. And then we do exactly what we did before. So the gradient um, is equal to, well, the change in y is equal to 6 over the change in x, 0 to 8, 
is 8. And then 6 over 8 simplifies to 3 quarters. So the gradient there is 3 quarters, which means each time x increases by 1, it's going up, y is increasing by 3 quarters of the square. We can just about see that. 1 across 3 quarters up, 1 across 3 quarters up, 1 across 3 quarters up, etc.